I will now call to order a special meeting of council on the two, 2021 budget discussions on Wednesday, October 28th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Um, note, uh, we'll turn first to attendance. And I note that all members of council are in attendance with the exception of Councillor Akaji and Councillor Gumashell, who we hope will be able to join us in progress, uh, not having heard whether they're absent for the entire meeting. Um, I also want to uh, advise the public that may be watching uh, by various means that uh, we have with us uh, Chief Administrative Officer and Treasurer Chris Spear. We have uh, Paul Knopper, our uh, clerk and senior administrator. And I believe we have Emily Dodden, our assistant treasurer, and we have Terry Acton, our asset and operations manager, who will also be sitting in on the meeting, all of whom have, uh, have had a tremendous hand in the preparation of this budget. So uh, the, uh, we will move to uh, the approval of the agenda as written, please, and, as, and a mover for that. I so move. Thank you, Councillor Bishop, and a seconder. I'll second that, Your Worship. Okay, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Anderson. Um, all in favor of approving the agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Uh, we will uh, now call for disclosure of conflict of interest by any uh, member of council in relation to the matters before us tonight. Hearing none, we can move on. Uh, we will go directly to introduction and consideration of passing of bylaws and motions. Uh, <laughs> and it is in fact, uh, Council FA 200704, Council Workshop 5 for Budget Discussions 2021. <clears throat> Council, uh, what I'm proposing to do tonight is to uh, turn this matter over to Mr. Spear initially to go through with us the uh, budget changes that were made in draft four, which you have before you, uh, following the, dis the last discussion of budget that we had. Then I think we will move after that uh, with the assistance of uh, mostly, I think, Mr. Spear, to go through the capital budget that's proposed for general. Uh, and this is in reaction to a request by uh, Deputy Mayor Henderson at the last meeting that we go through item by item in the capital budget to see whether we have a consensus, consensus on this draft of those matters. And then I heard just uh, briefly earlier from Councillor Grew, thank you, Councillor Grew, that we should need to spend a little time going through in the same sort of manner with the utilities budget, particularly the capital expenditures that remain. So uh, that was a big mouthful, but uh, that seems like a proper way to go. I would also just, uh, remind members of the public that are watching in and uh, will be here for question period that questions need to relate only to the budget for 2021. Uh, there'll be another opportunity on Monday night at the uh, regular meeting to talk about the agenda that we have on Monday night. Uh, so uh, Mr. Spear, that was a long winded introduction, but uh, if you don't mind taking over, thank you. Thank you, Worship. I'll just double check and okay. Uh, Okay, so can everyone see the title screen, Tennis and Andrews budget discussions? Yes. Yep. Yeah, okay. Please start. Okay, thank you. All right, so folks, I'm just going to go through kind of the changes that we had tonight. I didn't want to go into an in-depth uh, yet because we've gone through a lot of this already. So between the meeting last week and this week, the following changes have been made. There we go. So as request, there was a request from the Chamber of Commerce for $45,000 and it was instructed to staff that we transfer the town portion of the current year's tourism, tourism accommodation levy to the town, which on this version that's before you is 17,700, but there's been significant changes to that since uh, we prepared this last Friday. So we'll update that in a couple of minutes. Um, we increased the medical center janitorial to $15,000 in light of the larger space. Uh, because of the um, retirement of, of a person on staff, we reduced the arena wages and benefits 
by $30,000, which would be about six months worth of wages for next year until we decide longer term what to do with that position. Um, we added $10,000 for the ice plant refurbishments as discussed. We also added $25,000 for further wellness center equipment, whatever form that may take. Uh, it was, from my recollection, specifically to the fitness area. Um, we're trying to, to get more equipment, but it was offset by a New Horizons grant for $25,000, which uh, Mr. Knopper submitted, I think, a couple of weeks ago or last week. So that, that's in, in the works. Um, we also added uh, a project that we found out about last week, which we're excited, is in regards to active transportation that had just come to us uh, early last week. So there's $750,000 both for next year and the year after. So it's a $1.5 million project. Federal funding is 80%, so $60,000 in each year, and the town portion of that would be $150,000. So the general fund debt over uh, five is 2.1 additional debt over five years, which considering the size of those projects isn't too bad. I don't know if that might be, I'm double checking myself, that might be 2.1 next year. No, 2.1 in the next five. So debt servicing in 2019 was 5.8%. By 2025, it only goes to 7.5%. So as discussed previously, it's about 10% is about the limit that the province of New Brunswick starts to worry about the expenditure. Although by legislation, towns can spend up 20% of the general budget for debt servicing and are still being compliance with the regulations. Now, I think we're, we have two large projects that are coming on board in the next two years. And I think that type of debt resurfacing is pretty good. You know, get uh, one from the, um, Wharf and the other one potentially on active transportation. So I think these are big generational style projects that uh, are worth taking into. Something I don't have brought into this was included in your documentation is there's actually after five years, there's still half a million dollars in reserve funds left in general capital. So if this debt load is still too significant for council, we could increase uh, the transfer from reserve funds to reduce that in any of the years moving ahead. We'll look at that in a little bit. Now, the tourism accommodation levy, uh, it's a good news story, but it kind of changes our discussion from last time. So the version that we have in front of you that we only knew at the preparation of these reports is that we had $53,000 in collections, but this week we collected the rest of the reports there's actually $143,000 in total collections for the tourism as accommodation levy. So considering the pandemic, it's pretty good. Um, so right now under our current arrangement, $90,000 is going to the tourism, as tourism accommodation levy board for promotion, $46,000 to the town and $7,000 in what we're calling admin fee, which is meant for the legal defense fund. Um, and so, that is the breakdown. That will be substantially all. We had to make a little bit of an estimate for the last quarter, but generally those are so small that it won't make a, a much of a change to it. So with all that said, this current budget was prepared assuming that all of the town's portion would go to the chamber. But at that point, we only thought it was $17,000. So now that it's jumped up to $46,000, I just wanna make council aware of that and probably should have a discussion on that tonight about how you wanna deal with that. For your worship, I think I'll add, before we get into the capitals, I'll finish my presentation and we'll circle back to this if you don't mind. Don't mind, go ahead, Mr. Spear. Okay. So the utility fund um, built in right now is increased annual revenues of 4%. Our current bylaw only allows 2%. So we'll have to look at how that's going to be achieved, but staff can do that over the next few weeks and give options back to this council for their deliberation. But keeping with um, other areas, we want to increase expenses by about 2%, which is the rate of uh, inflation that we expect in the next few years. 
and even discuss, uh, hearing the news on the way home, the bank rate is going to be held for at least another year and a quarter of a percent. So I think the 2% is plenty safe on that side of things. The big capital projects within the uh, utility fund are the steel reservoir needs to be refurbished. As you know, we did the concrete reservoir earlier this year, and that was $300,000. There's equipment replacement that primarily at the water treatment plant and the wastewater treatment plant for 252000 and upgrading various water and sewer lines in the town for about 374000 So in 2021, we're taking on additional debt of 746000 and $3.6 million in additional debt over the five years of, of our projections. Um, I'll go through this. I know we're circling back to other questions, but next steps. I, I'm hoping we can approve the budget either this coming Monday night by adding it to the agenda or next Wednesday night. Um, just to remind you that the province wants their form in hand by, I think, November the 20th. So we're down to our last couple of weeks that council can debate this. Um, then we need to forward the, pro, uh, the documents to the federal government. And even though we've got these large projects and that you may approve over the next few weeks or a couple of weeks, staff will certainly go back to council for more deliberation and instruction about the warp and the active transportation projects. We certainly won't be taking this on our own um, initiative. Uh, so just, just keep that in mind that you're not necessarily giving us blind permission to fly forward without getting back to you guys in some of these larger initiatives. So I had it open to questions, but maybe on the presentation, but we're going to head, I think, circle around to other stuff in a minute, Your Worship. So it's up to you if you want to do questions now or questions later. Well, I think uh, we should circle back around uh, and talk a little more about the uh, accommodation level. Okay, I'll just bring that back up. Here we go. So certainly it is a good news story, as I previously said. And originally, uh, the accommodation levy board had used our figures as well. So they figured they're only going to get about forty-five dollars or $50,000 towards promotion. And then we'd have 17000 for tourism development, which at the last meeting council had said we just transferred that to the Chamber of Commerce for their initiatives and then move forward. Um, but the big question now is that it's you know more than almost tripled what originally thought. There's ninety thousand dollars going to the town, and forty six thousand dollars coming to the town. And so it's whether you still want to transfer that whole amount to the chamber. And uh, there's one other question because I saw Neil was on earlier and I think Katie was joining was is in relation to the VIC. So from their understanding, they are responsible for the Visitor Information Center. They'll accept that, but it's up to them whether they actually operate it or not. And so, you know, they wanna know if that's the flexibility or if council is demanding that they have a VIC operating in the future or at least next year. Uh, one of their concerns, of course, was as we saw, in earlier reports that the numbers at the Visitor Information Center in this year at the Atlantic bubble were substantially low, very low. It may not be worth having it in another situation like that. But they didn't really understand or wanted clarity about what your opinion was on the operations of the VIC, that if you know they're willing to accept it, but also only willing to operate it when they deem necessary. And uh, maybe at the end you can follow up more with Mr. Shorthouse, but that's kind of the understanding. So I guess it really, now question or council, I need you to, I guess, instruct us on knowing that the collections are so much higher, what you'd like to do uh, moving forward to next year. So what we're really left with is that the chamber has asked for 45,000, the accommodation levy is 90,000. And uh, again, their original hope when they made the application was the tourism board would still get all their funding, plus the town will provide 45. So, yeah, but in this case, we were only going to go with 17 a week ago. But as we see, our town's portion's up to 46. So uh, I guess with uh, Mr. Shorthouse and stuff being here, we're just, everyone just wants to see what it is so everyone can make plans moving forward. The uh, council, uh, 
anybody have a question about that at this point in time? I was going to ask Deputy Mayor Henderson to lead the discussion, perhaps because uh, of his prior involvement to this. Deputy Mayor? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, I guess uh, looking at two ways. So obviously, when we originally uh, created this this bylaw, we anticipated that the funds would be a lot more than they are. However, uh, with that being said, this is definitely uh, good news. And to be honest, we it's, it's probably something we should have expected. I, I know that uh, it was a lot slower in town than we anticipated, but not that much slower. So the fact that the numbers coming in there seems to make a lot more sense based on what we saw this year. Um, but yeah, it's, it's up for council debate. Um, just a, a couple of things is just to remind council that uh, for one industry, the tour boat operators, I think we forgave them almost $70,000 alone, that one industry. And this one is one that could look after all of them. Uh, one could argue that since it's less than we originally forecasted, um, it makes sense to reinvest. Uh, it's going to be, we can't take our success for year one for, for granted for year two. I think we need to continue to find ways in which to put St. Andrews on the map uh, when it comes to competing with other uh, staycation locations. Uh, and just because people again came here this past summer does not mean that we are going to be a vacation hotspot for them next year. So there's a lot of arguments before that. I will say that uh, the 45,000 in the tall, I understand that the 45,000 is to operate the visitor information center, but I really think that the 45,000 from the chamber just needs to be removed from this conversation. Um, the money that was collected for this fund was always met for Talb and never for the Chamber of Commerce. So the Chamber of, did Talb decide to run a visitor information center? It's not, it's their money. It's not the Chamber of Commerce. And I know it's a subcommittee, but Talb was never met to subsidize the Chamber of Commerce. So we got to make sure that it's not that. The other thing I will say is if we do decide to, uh, you know, leave it as is or increase it, I do think that we do need to see a budget. We had an original presentation uh, a long time ago on what it could look like, but um, just like the uh, tour, uh, the, uh, sorry, the BIA levy, they present an annual budget to us. So that way, if somebody on the street asks us, where did that money go? We're able to say that it went here, here, and here. I think when you're giving that much money to an organization, we need to know exactly what the plan is for the year. So I think we need to challenge uh, Tom to that. Um, but uh, net net where, where my head's at personally is um, it's a lot less than we've ever had to market this region. So CCRTAs uh, for, the, for the, at least the last decade has had over $200,000 to market St. Andrews and the surrounding area. Uh, and this amount of fun, although it is a lot, it's a lot less than they've ever had to market the area. So although it sounds like a, a great amount of money, my head's at, these are basically, these are funds collected by uh, tourists that are coming to our area. I think that in a year where the money is lower than normal and a year in which we can't take anything for granted, I think we should reinvest it into the tourism providers to continue to make sure in better times that this fund continues to service each other because there could be a lot of struggling businesses next summer. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Just one more question from me. Could you comment on what you raised at the last meeting again about the possibility of some investment by the provincial government in uh, the Visitor Information Center in view of, do we have any more information? I know it's only been a week, but that struck a chord with me. No, so just to, to, to echo those comments. So um, I think it's in partnership with Talb and the town of St. Andrews, I think we need to look at our provincial government in the Visitor Information Center. I am aware that they have not funded our VIC for a number of years, but the reality is, is they were funding one in St. Stephen. And they made the decision last year that that is the only one in the province that they did not run. So therefore they had a budget savings by closing St. Stephen. As such, St. Andrews, uh, is naturally the spot in the region that makes the most sense to invest in a visitor information center. And, and, and we're not asking for the full amount of the budget, we're just asking them help us staff it. Um, so I think that with their budget savings, uh, we're kind of a center point. If you're coming from Fredericton or you're coming from St. John, we can help cascade traffic, not just in St. Andrews, but also to give them information on where they can go in St. Stephen, St. George. Uh, we, if we're willing to operate a visitor information center and there's been budget there in the past, I don't see why we're not putting pressure on our, our partners at the provincial government to consider investing in St. Andrews. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I, I agree with you fully. Uh, council, I'll open it up to questions from Council. 
Your Worship? Yes, Councilor Group. Thank you. Um, just to clarify, and, and, and I think when we were talking before about um, giving the town portion to Talb, we were talking about uh, a forecasted amount of $53,000 total for everything. Now the forecast is coming in at 143,000. Um, I, I think if we uh, stick to the original uh, percentages that were set out in the tourism accommodation levy where Talb would get uh, approximately ninety thousand dollars, and the town would retain forty-five thousand for tourism development. I think that's quite reasonable. And the fact that we are going, we as a town are going to incur uh, additional expenditures for tourism development, um, much as we did this year uh, with, with uh, the 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 uh, blocking off of Water Street and things like that. But I think that we need to that that. Uh, retention of the, the tourism development dollars by the town is a responsible thing to do. And it also gives TALB uh, adequate funding, a lot more funding than they would have gotten previously uh, under our previous plan. So it's sort of that happy medium and I think it accomplishes uh, all the goals that we were looking at before. So uh, I, I would suggest that we, uh, we go with the tourism accommodation breakdown that um, the, the staff have suggested and I, I think with 90,000 going to Tall, 45,000, which is the town portion, and approximately 7,000 for the um, administration fee. Thank you. Uh, anyone else, uh, council? Um, I just want to clarify something. I want to make sure that we're right here because uh, hard to get confused about three different things, but uh, I think uh, Deputy Mayor Henderson said it properly. Um, Talb is Talb. Uh, Talb is not required to fund a visitor information center. That's a piece of business between town council and the Chamber of Commerce. The uh, Chamber of Commerce is asking us for $45,000. The only question left is should we give them our 46,000 share because we agree to the entire amount, which then obviates any taxpayer money going to the Chamber of Commerce. This is essentially money paid by uh, visitors to our town uh, when they paid the levy. Uh, do we want to do it that way? And then it frees up that the $91,000 that goes to Tall is for destination marketing and all of the other promotional things that we set that committee up for in the first place. Deputy Mayor, am I off? Am I out to lunch here or is that exactly the assessment you made of it? Wait, it, it it can be. It's a little bit. So, so first of all, Talb is a subcommittee of the Chamber of Commerce. So, um, but the the funds that we have collected are specifically for tourism initiatives. And a Chamber of Commerce, uh, if you gave it straight to the Chamber of Commerce, they deal with tourism, but they also deal with other industries, whether it be institutional or you know service providers. So, we've got to make sure that all of the money goes to Talb, and then it's up to Talb if they want to do the visitor information center or not. Um, so, uh, mm -hmm. if they decide to do the visitor information center then um, I expect that money to go into the Visitor Information Center. I don't expect a, a journal entry going to the Chamber of Commerce and it's something that's just absorbed. We, we need to make sure that all of that money that we collected for tourism is indeed for tourism. Either way, no matter what that amount is. So right. I, I, we, we owe it, the money we give to Tall, what we're asking for is for Tall to send back a budget to us to say what they're spending it on. No matter if it's for the full amount or is it's for a less amount it's it's uh either way we need to have some accountability on that number from tall because that's that's who we're giving the money to right but we're giving them but when it comes down to our share of the tourism levy it comes directly to the town that's correct yeah is it, it you know we give them their share but we keep our share as part of our budget revenue correct and uh, we decide whether we give any of that to the Chamber of Commerce for whatever reason, or are we expecting Tall to give, are we, are we telling Tall as subcommittee of the Chamber of Commerce that some of the money that we're giving to them as a subcommittee, which probably should go through the Chamber anyway, if they're only a subcommittee of the Chamber of Commerce, that, any, that they're, they're on the hook to pay for the Visitor Information Center? Uh, I, would, I would say that what we would look for is Tall, like the so the people that are making decisions on Tall are different than their board. Um, I, the the Tall is is tourism providers, so I would expect that Tall themselves send us through Mr. Uh, 
uh, Shorthouse, who's on here, him himself as chair of TAL, sends us what the budget is for the year. Uh, and if they are giving funds to the Chamber of Commerce, we need to know how much and why. Right. So directly, because TALB's initiatives are different than the Chamber of Commerce. They're a subcommittee. They're specifically for, for one industry because that's what we're allowed to collect the money from. Right, I get it. But, uh, but the Visitor Information Center, well named, is about visitors. It's not. So what does council want to invest in the Visitor Information Center and where's that money going to come from? I guess cutting to the chase here. I'm good with agreeing to, or and I think it's a request of the of the uh, group that they don't need to run it necessarily. If they think it's worthwhile, if they want to run a VIC, then then that's the money they have to run it with. But if 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 the tourist operators themselves do not see the use of it, then I don't know why the town would ever run one. That, that's that's correct. So uh, your worship through you is is to agree with Councillor Harrison is we what we expect is to say this is the funds what is your plan and it's up to them themselves if they're going to use their funds to fund a visitor information center or they are not going to it all depends if they think that that's that's value or could they take those dollars and invest them something for greater uh return for for all those that are interested now the the, the only thing in terms of sharing with the chamber i wouldn't be too off put if the whatever you want to call it, executive director of TALB or whatever the, the paid position they'll probably have is a shared position. I like, like, like I, I think there can be some uh, gains there by, by, you know, not having a full time on either side, but I, I think the deputy mayor is right that they, it does have to be a bit of a silo in terms of that money only should be spent on the, uh, the tourism sector. Councilor Akaji. You have a question? No, I do not. Oh, you just your name just came up on the screen. That's all. Nope. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. Councillor Group. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add to the discussion is that we already have a bylaw uh, for the tourism accommodation levy that it clearly indicates how the money is to be divided, and. Um, you know, we, we, we were obligated to follow that bylaw or start talking about amending that bylaw. So it, it, it's, uh, I think the discussion's pretty clear cut is two thirds of the money goes to TALB, one third of the money goes for tourism development, which is controlled by the town. Through, through your worship, when it was a, a less amount of money last week, Councillor Gru did not speak to that very fact. He was fine giving 100% to TALB. It's just now that it's a larger sum, that he's saying let's stick to the bylaw. We were we were all last week unanimous from what my understanding is saying that we were comfortable with 100% going to TALB. So uh, it just seems like now that it's more, we're, we're kind of changing our story a little bit. Well, no, we have a bylaw. If we're not gonna follow our own bylaws, I think, why do we make them? <laughs> you know, it's... it's. But you, you can change bylaws. And, and last week, again, I, I, don't, I didn't hear you being opposed to the full amount. It's just now that it's more money, uh, again, through you. Uh, I don't think we need to change anything. I think we just have to phrase it in the way that our one third, our project this year is giving it to Tall. And uh, like, like, I think we can have it both ways without changing bylaws or and why indeed do we make these geese? <laughs> why do we, yes. <laughs> Well, Councillor Harrison has the uh, has the right idea on how, how to how to mm -hmm. proceed forward. Should we do it or not? Right. The only problem that I have is that we currently have in front of us a request for forty five thousand dollars from the Chamber of Commerce uh, to the town, right? And uh, that request involves both tourism development and other things, and we need to make a decision and we're trying to plan a budget so that we will either have money which we direct to give to the Chamber of Commerce directly or we don't. Right at the moment, if we give everything to TALB, to me, I think that's the reverse of what it should be. If TALB is an independent entity, that's one thing. If they're a subcommittee of the Chamber of Commerce, it seems a little awkward to, uh, you know, that's uh, for us to be giving all of our money to a subcommittee of the Chamber of Commerce and then telling the Chamber of Commerce there's no money left for them to do what they asked us for. And it also seems ridiculous to me that we should look at changing our budget and finding taxpayer money on top of the 
big return we got on the uh, accommodation uh, levy that we need to find another $46,000 or, or some part of that to make a decision about a grant to the uh, Chamber of Commerce. So, uh, you know, maybe I'm confused uh, unnecessarily, but I don't see it the same way you do. I say tourism development for forty for forty six thousand dollars is in fact uh, running a running a, a a tourism information center is in fact tourism development, much like we discussed early on when we were debating the bylaw for the accommodation levy about building new washrooms for tourists because that was tourism development and should be done by the town. So the, just the bylaw that we passed on on the tourism accommodation levy, we were very clear that the BIC was part of the tourism promotion piece, not tourism development. Right. And, and I think it was council more or less agreed uh, at the last meeting that um, we were not going to provide money to the Chamber of Commerce. We were going to provide money to the toll. And I think the deputy mayor was very clear on that issue. Correct. So basically, just to be clear, the chamber, it, it is one and the same in some sense. So the chamber is saying they need the 45,000 essentially to run the visitor information center. Uh, we, but however, when we made the agreement, the agreement was that a subcommittee would be formed to dictate how the funds are going. So all I'm saying is that we allocate the funds to the subcommittee and should they decide to run the visitor information center, then they can partner with the chamber of commerce for that amount of money. But the money we get goes to that committee that they set up specifically for this fund. And again, it could be, it's the same money because they're asking for 40, basically the chamber money is for the VIC. We're just saying we're going to let Tall decide if they want a VIC or not. That, that's what it comes down to, no matter what amount of money we have. The amount of money we give them will probably help them make a decision uh, right. because right. essentially that could eat up very quickly. Half of that, if it is 90, half that 90 will go to a visitor information center based on the way we ran it. So, so you're so you're suggesting that that the uh, the visitor information piece has to do with toll. It comes out of their ninety one thousand dollars, and we collect forty six thousand dollars. Although we don't currently have a plan for the expenditure of that forty six thousand dollars. Correct. And since the what I'm proposing is since the fund is still almost fifty percent, or at least sixty percent, what we thought it was when we created toll. Right. Um, sorry, don't, when we create, when, when they create Tom. So when we talked about this fund, it's, it, it, it's so much smaller than we ever envisioned having. Because of that, I'm saying to reinvest it so we can continue to put heads and beds and continue to grow the fund long term. But because we had a good year this year, it doesn't mean we're going to have one next year. So we need them Great. to find initiatives. Okay. And the next step is a budget from Tom based on the $91,000, correct? Sorry there, it froze for me. I, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I just merely was repeating. Sorry, I'm, I'm being okay. difficult today. Sorry. But uh, I just said the next step is $91,000 to toll because that's what the bylaw says. And uh, we will have an expectation of a budget from them as how they're going to spend their $91,000 in 2021. I think, Your Worship, what we need to do is get consensus if we're giving the extra one third of the funds to toll or not. Right. That, is the, that is what we'll need consensus on. Uh, I'm, I'm saying to do it since it's less than normal. Councilor Grew is saying it's more than we originally planned to give them last week, so we don't need to essentially. Is that correct, Councilor Grew? Well, I, I, let, let's put it this way. Last week, we were going to give Tall $53,000. Now we're giving them ninety, dollars So they're getting more than we had planned to give them all along. And we still need the money for tourism development because we're still going to have to rent washrooms. We're still going to have to do all sorts of tourism development activities and the town should not have to foot that out of taxpayers dollars. We should foot it out of the, the tourism develop, uh, the tourism uh, accommodations levy because that's what it's related to. And the beneficiaries of that are going to be the tourists that come to the town. Okay. I guess the, the, the Taub is getting more money than was expected anyway. But less than what we thought it would when we created the bylaw, still. Well, the bylaw, if you're going to go back to the bylaw, the bylaw has the breakdown of two-thirds, one-third. Right. 
and we're very it's very clear about where that money goes so the money uh, currently if, if there's a consensus to this position that uh, we give Tal $91,000 and we keep 46,000 for ourselves, then that's what we're looking for as a consensus on council. Council? But then I think there's the second question is, do we then have a plan for our 40 whatever thousand and that's to give it to Tal? Correct. To add to their 90. Correct. So we're following the bylaw. Well, the bylaw says tourism development. So if Talb, Talb is not using it for tourism development, they're using it for tourism promotion. And, and the bylaw states that the, man, the money is to be managed by the town. But again, we're, we're gonna just have to take this to a vote, Your Worship. Creating a visitor information center that doesn't exist currently would be tourism development. We don't have a VIC right now. We turned it into a part right. of a wellness center. So if, our, if they use bylaw, that money, yeah, but our bylaw states that the visitor information center is tourism promotion. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really worried about the bylaw because we can just give them out of general funds, the money, and then use the 40 towards a trail we're already building or some other thing that could be tourism yeah. development. I mean, so I'm not, let's not worry about the bylaw. Do we want to give them 40,000, I guess is the question, above their 90? And, and I think we can route it however we need to route it to get to them. So the ultimate question is, you know, they are quite a bit lower than what we expected for their purposes. So do we want to help them out this year? And obviously not every year, but uh, this year to uh, have more money for their marketing endeavors. That's the way I see it. Also, I'd, be here. I'd like to hear from, from those who've not weighed in yet as uh, Otherwise, we're facing putting this as a motion to the regular meeting next week and vote on it as a separate a motion as to what we want to do about this particular part of the budget. So in essence, uh, the final analysis of all this whole discussion is that you're talking about giving 91,000 to Tall and the 46,000, which is the town share over to the chamber. Am I correct in this? Or no? Well, I think I think the prevailing is that it would all go to Talb, and then Talb would decide whether any of that money goes to the chamber proper or not. That's that's how I understood it. Deputy Mayor, is that correct? I'm sorry. I, I was just uh, well, sorry. Can you repeat the question? Uh, yep, I'll repeat the question. So we're. The final analysis of this whole discussion, we're talking about possibly giving 91,000 to Tall and the town share of 46,000 over to the chamber, or am I incorrect on that? What, what I was proposing uh, was to give the, the full amount to Tall, and should they want to run a visitor information center, then they can do so. The, the, so basically the Chamber of Commerce is asking for the money to run a BIC, I'm just saying to give it all to Talb and let Talb decide what they want to do with these funds. Whether it be the full amount or partial amount, it all goes to Talb is what I'm proposing. Okay. okay. Um, and you're just giving them this amount of money and saying do what, do with it whatever you want. We would we not want to have something that says here's the way we plan to spend this money you you know i just don't understand that and the question of whether uh, we want to we want to see a vic in our town um i i feel really um reluctant to say that as a tourist town we 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 don't need a vic or we don't think it's necessary or whatever you know but i i don't really know whether i'm right or wrong on that but i'm just throwing it out there so, so to answer the question, I think we all can align that we would, with these funds before they're released, we'd like to see their annual budget. Um, it's yeah. a lot of money either way. I think we're all aligned to that. Yes. Uh, as, far, as far as the VIC, uh, this council has debated it every year that I've been on council. Yep. And uh, what we're essentially doing, like giving it to Tall, is, is letting the tourism operators themselves 
decide if that is the best use of tourism dollars in St. Andrews. So they can debate that whether, because they would feel it the most, whether it's benefiting or not benefiting. Uh, if it's not benefiting, where else would they put the dollars? But they would be the ones that understand the impacts the most. Uh, so versus us debate it where some are closer to tourism, they, they would be the one. I would assume that it's something that they would really like to find a way to make happen, but over to them to figure out how to make it happen. Okay, thank you. And of course, the other option is, uh, and I think this is what uh, Councillor Grew, Councillor Grew, jump in here if I'm misinterpreting what you said. But uh, mm -hmm. the uh, I think what Councillor Grew is saying is that the one third forty six thousand dollars belongs to the town, and even if we don't have a specific purpose to spend it tomorrow, it goes into a reserve, and we keep that money until we have uh, tourism development needs that we wish to uh, advance. Uh, absolutely, that's that's what I'm advocating is that we. So that's another option. We can give the we can give Tal ninety one thousand. They determine, file a budget with us and determine how they want to spend the money and whether any of it goes to a VIC or not, and the in whatever form they they decide, uh, they have to follow the bylaw. But so do we. We have to follow the bylaw or we have to change the bylaw. So, the other option is just to. Uh, Keep in the budget ninety-one thousand for Tulb and uh, forty-six thousand for the town for tourism development, and then the decision of how to spend it comes later. It just needs to be in the budget in the appropriate place. Yeah, Your Worship, I know we talked about a motion, but I, I feel like we can get consensus. <coughs> the motion is approval of the, of the budget itself because we're right. making hundred thousand dollar decisions left, right, and center in the budget. We're not individually voting for them in formal right. motion. So. Right. I agree. I agree. I think we should just decide if, how do we want this to look. It looks. Uh, it looks. It's. It's down to two things. It's. It's ninety-one thousand plus forty-six thousand dollars to Talb, or it's ninety-one thousand dollars to Talb and uh, forty-six thousand dollars to uh, the town of St. Andrews as revenue to the budget that uh, is to be reserved for tourism development, whatever we define that to be in twenty twenty-one. I'm in favor of that. Okay. Councillor Akaji, you're there. What do you think? Well, I agree that we had said that we would give the money to Tall, so I think I would go with that decision that we made before. So all the money to Tall? Yeah. Okay. Um, Councillor Gru. Uh, the break, I would give 91000 to Tall. And forty-three thousand to the um, to the town for tourism development. Okay. Uh, 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 Deputy Mayor, I'm just going. Uh, yes, I, I would uh, give all of the money to Tall, with exception of holding back the amount we have uh, the five percent for for legal. Right. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Harrison. Uh, I think I'd give all the money to Tall this year. Okay, thank you. And uh, is Councillor Gumichel on? I haven't seen him on the. He is. He is Councillor Gumichel. Sorry. I just can you didn't... see me now? Yeah, I can now. <laughs> now I can see you. Yes. I got a mustache. Councillor Gumichel. <laughs> I'd follow, follow the as much as I'd love to have more money for tourism development uh, on the town side. Uh, I think the deputy mayor uh, had a leadership role in developing the uh, the tourism accommodation levy board and all all that stuff. He seems to have pretty good insight into that, and uh, uh, so I would tend to uh, tend to go with uh, his position that we uh, that we give all the money to the TALB. Okay, I didn't miss anybody, did I? I don't think so. Okay. No. Uh, Mr. Spear, then I guess it's uh, ninety-one thousand dollars to uh, uh, to Talb in the budget, and uh, nothing in in tourism uh, development uh, for well, us. Well, no, your worship would be ninety-one plus forty-six would be one hundred and thirty thousand oh, so, dollars. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, whatever way that works in terms of being compliant with the uh, bylaw. Okay, worship, and so just to, to, to circle back, just so. Right now, the Chamber of Commerce is not going to be getting anything except whatever the TALB provides them. Is, is that correct? 
correct? Yeah. Okay. And just a couple other notes I do know, and Mr. Shorthouse will probably come on in later, but they actually presented a, a budget earlier today. They're just about there now that they have the funds that they know they can put something together. So I'm hoping in the next two weeks, they'll probably have a budget ready for council as the bylaw, they've been working on it. But with this new information, they had to work around it. Hey, good. Thank you, council. That took a bit of time, but uh, was occasioned by the fact that we're richer than we think. Just like the Scotia Bank. Oh, they say we're richer than we think. I think they're richer than we think. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's move on. Mr. Spear? So I guess, Your Worship, we're going to page 19 of the budget to discuss capital projects. Okay, good. So I'm just going to go through these relatively quickly. I'll look for someone to raise a hand or shout out if they want me to stop and so you can debate or discuss an item. But we've talked about each of these and most of them are self-explanatory, uh, but I'll just work through them. And when we get to something that's of interest, let me know. So computers and accessories for the town, $7,500. We're talking about creating a hallway behind the reception desk. So that would be across from Emily's office. It's about $5,000 be done in-house. Uh, how urgent is that one, Mr. Spear? Well, if COVID continues, it's fairly urgent. For anyone who's been in, we see we have like a plastic plexiglass thing and we're continuously trying to go around it close. And it's really, um, well, to be honest, unprofessional looking. Is it life or death? No, we can go on forever like that. But from a practical standpoint, to give a professional representation to our citizens, it'd be awful nice to get rid of that and, and rebuild that part of the town hall. So it's a it's a temporary measure that's COVID related. Is that correct? Somewhere in between, with this extra wall and stuff there. So for council, as you come into the town hall, you know you come in through that locked door in the front and you turn left by the reception desk. And even when COVID isn't a thing, you're kind of tripping over the receptionist. And so it's, it's pretty close quarters there with that extra oversized countertop. So it'd be nice just to be able to move the, the entry point another five feet back. So she has a little more privacy and people aren't tripping over her chairs. They're, they're getting to the other offices. And that won't, re that won't interfere with the washroom that's there? No. Okay, thank you. Um, then, okay, this is the next one. So there's $19,000 in there. For, we're calling it COVID transportation measures. Um, it's, I guess, a, if we're going to be basically set aside, if we're going to go with the, something similar to the water or the Water Street pilot project this year, that's to be able to build some type of barricade system along Water Street to prevent the parking. That one, well, that one was priced at a high end with picket fence style. If we go something smaller with planters or something that's ropes instead of a solid barricade the whole way along, that, that will be significantly less. Okay. This, is, this is where that tourism development money would have been useful. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Uh, for $25,000, we're going to recondition the boat ramp down by the Yacht Club. Then we have about $286,000 in our resurfacing budget for asphalt roads. We're hoping for another $40,000 uh, to finish phase two of the Pocket Park Elizabeth Street. That's to create a platform, put some more benches and picnic tables along there. That's hey, that Chris. area. Yep. Sorry to interrupt, but the boat ramp, I'm, I'm assuming that has to be done or? Yeah, it's its in pretty bad shape. It's They've been asking for it to be done for about 10 years and I think Terry's who's, finally said it's just a boat. Who's they? Like boaters. like who kind of has the, like like who uses that? Because I mean, a lot of the sailboats obviously don't put in there. Is it just no, like? No, just about every boat in town that isn't sailing from somewhere else has to go there. So the boat ramp that's adjacent to the wharf is too shallow. You can't get a boat in there. 
So just any boat, anyone with a boat on a trailer has to go at that end unless they're fitting in somewhere else and sailing into town. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so we're flipping to page 20 now. And we're about two thirds of the way down the bottom of the page. There's a gravelly zero turn mower for, to replace one for our parks and rec crew. Um, then there's some equipment, about $12,000 in equipment for um, public work. So a ripper tooth for the backhoe, uh, canopies for our mowers. So it reduces the sun on our parks and rec crew and um, an additional shipping container for public works to be able to store water parts, I believe. Okay, to page 21. These are all items for the WC O'Neill Arena. So the first one is to replace the sidewalk out front that's been deferred for a couple of years now and it's in pretty rough shape. It was originally intended for this year, but was deferred because of the COVID till we saw how that effect. Then the oil tank rehabilitation project will, should, will be completed next year for another $20,000. Um, there's some insulation needed in the center area of the main hockey rink and the peak of the roof, so that's 6,000. Upgrade keys and locks for 6,000. Replace the display sign, the 22,000, Terry, you'll have to nod. That's a more expensive of the two options, correct? We had kind of the monument style. Yeah, that's, that's the most expensive one, Chris. There was two options that was presented in uh, back a month ago to council. I think the first option is around eight thousand dollars to just kind of refurbish what we have now for a sign, and this twenty-two would be for the monument style. Questions or concerns, council? Um, decommission one of the compressors. We have three compressors out back. One of them, one of them hasn't been operating for years. Um, this is just to basically unhook it from the rest. The actual compressor will stay there, but it's to reduce the ammonia piping that goes through it. And then there's stairs and a walkway that's in the compressor room. That room is about two stories high and we have to replace some st uh, wooden stairs there. And as Mr. Sharp used to say, it's the 1970 style that's still in there. So we're trying to update those. Uh, the changing room doors need to be replaced. They're pretty rough shape uh, because of the thickness and stuff. That's only two or three of them. Then there's replaced the, the windows. And this time it's what we're calling the Minister's Island end or the theater end. So the the whole front of the arena, all that glass has been replaced in phases over the last six or seven years. We're trying to get the third phase done. Uh, if you go to some of them, there there is a bit of a safety issue there that some of the, I don't even think it's aluminum, just metal casing of some of those is in pretty rough shape. There will be some economic um, heat savings and uh, Paul and Terry are working on putting together a plan. Uh, it was included in the consultant's budget to get a energy efficiency study done for a couple of buildings in order to be able to access some more funding. So we may, it's not built into the budget, but that may come towards the end of the year if we can get that done over the spring, get approval and do that. That's not 100% necessarily, but at this point it is highly recommended. Uh, $10,000 for the ice plant refurbishment just to replace some piping and things that are in the ice plant right now. That, that are due for replacement. And then we do have $8,000 in there for the, I guess, cleaning up the office space in the, the Minister Island vacated. That the original intent was that the chamber may reoccupy that space. Um, I guess long story short, they don't, I know there was a discussion that maybe we should be left to them if we're providing free space. And again, they'll have to bring this all to council, but it hasn't been built in any of their budgets to upgrade that space. So um, primarily there's a big heater there, but there's some windows that doors that have to be replaced that are actually leaking and have been for a little while. So we can probably speak more of that when he comes on later, but there are 
some things that have to be done in there. And as we know, 8,000 doesn't co cover a lot. And I think in order to prepare the space for whatever tenant it is, we should do this work. Should we, should we uh, sort of determine who the long-term tenant in that space is gonna be before we actually do the, the, the renovations? I think Terry can speak better to this, but I think the renovations are just to clean up stuff that's been there since the beginning of the building. Um, one big thing is if you know that space, you go in, there's a heater there that acts like a little wall. It's not in use, I don't think it's been in use for decades. We'd like to remove that and then again, replace some of the windows and door on that side. Is there anything else, Terry? Yeah, uh, some of the flooring, Chris, that's got water damage on it. Okay. So we're looking at replacing some of that. So we're not looking at putting up walls and stuff, we're just cleaning up what's there. Gotcha, thanks. Hey, go to page 22 now. So most of these are under the fire department. Uh, the fire chief has asked for headsets for his fire trucks so his uh, drivers aren't operating with one hand. I guess that's reasonable considering the size of the vehicles they're driving. Um, some lounge furniture. Under COVID, we've realized they have like cushions that are made out of material, not plastic or faux leather. So they're just asking to replace a, a couch and I think a love seat just so it's something that's a lot more wipeable than what they've currently got there. The items that they have are very old and have been there for decades as far as I know too and possibly were donated by the community. Then there's $2,800 to replace a generator on a truck. So um, I think believe that's to operate the jaws of life primarily when they report to a scene of an accident, uh, but for other equipment on scene. Uh, a little further down, there's repaving the parking lot that would be actually included with the asphalting budget, but it's, we broke it up into two phases that if you go through their parking lot there on your own, you'll see that it's beyond cracking, it's falling apart fairly bad. So as it breaks up with these potholes, the more the big trucks run over them, just the more damage it's gonna do, it's gonna accelerate the amount of damage. So Terry may have to speak up in this one, but I think we do the front uh, yard in next year, Terry, and then propose to do the backyard in 2022. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be doing the front, then uh, we have to pulverize the whole front, then repave the front, then phase two has yes, to be the back part. Okay, thank you. I, I, I don't know, Chris, I, I've driven by there a few times and I don't see that parking lot as um, being in, in that bad of shape, comparatively speaking. Like when you're driving down the road, like those fire trucks are going to have to go on the, some of the roads in the parking lot. Um, so I see that as a high priority project at this point because it, it doesn't seem that, I, I, I don't know, I, I could be convinced otherwise, but I just don't see the damage there. Maybe Councillor Group, it'd be better if we can do a walk tour in the next couple of days and I'll mm -hmm. show you the concern. Just give me a call, drop me an yeah. email and we'll arrange okay. that. Um, and then a backflow preventer, which goes into our water system, it just needs to be replaced. It's part of our bylaw, so. All right, in page 23, we have $35,000 down for paint the exterior of the uh, courthouse and the shield. I will advise that within the budget, we have 50% financing that we we'll hope will come from the province on that. Uh, the library has asked for about six thousand dollars. It actually looks really nice, and just it's going to be freestanding on the property, not attached to the building. But it's got a heritage feel, similar to um, is it Ross? Yeah, I, I did provide. I think a drawing of that on time, Chris. But uh, yeah, it would be some, pretty close to the. museums stop but right now to continue okay and then the storage shed behind the museum and the library where they keep a few 
a few gardening tools for $1,500, the stairs almost falling down. And then the library has requested a heat pump in the basement. Currently it's uh, electric furnace. We've seen a uh, reduction in their heat costs because as you know, we've already installed two heat pumps in the building. And so they'd like a third down there and that would pretty much have the building fully heat pumped and should see another reduction in electricity. Uh, the museum. So the museum right now has uh, the front steps, the concrete steps off of Montague Street are in pretty rough shape. Public Works did a really good job this year of repairing them. It will have to be replaced in the next year or two, but the budget there is for $28,000 to completely them. Um, a little higher too because they're not up to current codes, so they're going to have to be extended a little bit. But again, I believe we had half that money would come from the uh, province under their built heritage program. At the youth center, they've asked to replace the greenhouse. So they have a little greenhouse there, but it was donated and it's um, pretty rough shape right now. So we want to take that one away. And $3,600 is for a kit that public works can build. The picket fence around the, uh, the side of the youth center protects a garden that's there. She uses raised gardens, uh, but it also protects some equipment and some water, the water spout. And that fence is in really bad shape. And we've painted it and repaired it as much as we can, but Public Works wants to replace it for 11500 And then in Currently, they're asked for tourists and a big TV for about 400 bucks now, these Roco TVs and stuff, so that's a reasonable request. All right, now we come to the big ones. So, sorry, I'm just looking here, okay. So, in Parks and Rec, we have trails and sidewalks for next year of 630,000. But I just noticed, oh no, wait a minute. Sorry, no, I'm confused. Okay, we'll skip that one for a second so I can get my bearings again. So the wharf renovations are being sp split up into the two. Um, oh, sorry. I, I do remember what that's for. Sorry. That was for the road along uh, Joe's Point Road and under Brandy Cove Road. So that's still built into the budget. We do have funding underneath for that, although there's a question under that we've gotten the new infrastructure project whether that there's going to be separate funding for that specific portion of it so the 630s for that uh the hey, wharf pro oh, sorry. sorry just to be clear so that was uh it, assuming we have outside funding and that plan is still up for discussion it doesn't necessarily have to be those two specific spots if if through our partners they determine that they can make it more efficient other places is that safe to assume well, no, okay, so here's, do it this way, Deputy Mayor. So, so up there we have 630 for trails and sidewalks, but if you go down almost to the very end, we have 750,000 down there as well. So there are two separate projects. The first project gotcha. was the 630 to, re, to fix the road along Joe's Point and through Brandy Cove out to Marine Science Drive. And we had built in some funding, which we haven't identified yet, by the way, that the applications will go in, hoping to, to get that. But then um, we found out recently from an application we made a couple of years ago, or a year ago, I guess, we've received uh, approval for a $1.5 million project for this active transportation that uh, council still has to decide uh, what avenue that's going to take. And uh, I think the sort is going to provide recommendations. They had kind of set the tone and made the original application in partnership with the town. And they'll come back with what they would like to see it spin on. But again, at the end of the day, it's up to council to make the final call on that. Gotcha. Just well, to both. clarify, the, um, the $630,000 project was in partnership with the Coastal Link Trail. And the 
1.5 million is in partnership with Sorti. So two different organizations there. And the, the 630,000 we were seeking, 504,000 in, in partner money from Coastal Link. And with Sorti, uh, it's one, we're, we're receiving 1.2 million from the federal government. So two, um, two different projects, same sort of thing, it's trails. Yeah, but just to clarify, uh, Coastal Link was never gonna be the partners. They assisted us, but we we're gonna look for an other partner that I'll agree with Councillor Grew that that 1.5 million project hadn't really taken into consideration that portion of the trail but the 630 was that portion, which was part of the overall scheme of the Van Horn Trail as it ran through St. Andrews. Um, Wharf renovation. So as you know, we have a big, close to a $5 million project uh, on the table that's gonna have 75% financing, if approved, it hasn't been approved yet. And so there's $3 million to be spent next year, and then 1.6 million in 2022. And um, working with uh, council have given us instructions to look at other alternatives and the engineers and I were talking today and in a couple of three weeks, they'll have that all worked out, including the life cycle analysis as asked by Councillor Grew. So uh, we can work concurrently through this, through this, but it's just council can approve it in theory and then still approve the final design at a later date. Um, and then right now there is $15,000 on electronic wharf gate that has been included in the budget. Um, I guess it goes back to the, it's controversial this year to have the gate there, although it did make life easier, both from a COVID perspective, but also from a operational perspective through the day. Um, one thing that didn't happen this year was there wasn't the number of tours going out on the tour boats, but in normal summers you get, you know, uh, 100,000, I think, passengers that go through there. So, um, or 50,000, sorry, passengers that go through there and, and we get people five abreast on the wharf, it makes it a little hard for cars to get through there safely. But, but I guess I'll throw it back to council if that wants to be left on the budget or not. For, for the, um, the wharf um, renovations, um, would, would it, uh, I, it almost seems like we, we the cash flow on that might be a bit off still because um, I think we might if we sort of have it split evenly between the two years that might be more realistic because we might get to a slow start on this and and because not all the questions have been answered the design's not complete um, and and you may find that as we get to that we might spend I don't know two and a half million or two maybe closer to two million this year and then the balance in 2022. And, and that would really improve our cash flow on the budget for this year. If we just did that, that little change there to spread it out more evenly. Does that make sense? Well, to some extent, Councillor, yes, because we wouldn't start until um, the fall. We wouldn't take out the yeah. summer season. So we'd probably spend you know, 1.5 1, 1. million this year, 1.5 million early, 2022 or you know next and then you know then half of the 16 at late 2022 and half of the 16 and or 1.6 in early 2023 just because the way the summer goes so, so you're thinking about spreading it over three years then well it's possible because the construction season is will run from like the first of november yeah. till the end of april so it'll you know the, the projects will straddle two fiscal years for the town so you know, it won't adjust the debt over five years, but, yeah. you know, it'll slow it down. And I mean, from a reality standpoint, we won't borrow the money until we actually need it. But if it makes council happy, we can show that being spread out a little bit differently. And then it won't have any changes in 2020, by 2025, it'll just slow yeah. it down a bit. I, I think that might, it, it'll dramatically change our budget numbers for us anyway. If we change that 3 million to a 2 million, uh, and then spread that out, the rest of it out over 2022, 2023. That'll have a big impact. Well, the, the, the 3 million is one project. If council decides to like create a new approach system, that'll be done all over one winter. 
So what I'd suggest okay. is 1.5 million in 2021 and half of the 1.5 million plus half of the 1.6 million in 2022 and the balance in 2023. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. That will lower uh, capital re uh, interest charges too somewhat. So it will, mm -hmm. the immediate effect will be it'll reduce the amount of debt uh, and the amount of um, general capital revenue that can go towards capital projects. So, you know, over the short term. Mm -hmm. So the wharf gate. Were the engineers still getting back to us on other ideas in terms yeah. of the uh, they are. So by the end of November, we'll have something in front of us. But in general discussions with them, when they prepared those original documents, they looked at alternate ideas and kind of, it was that breakwater versus the replacement as is was kind of the real two options that were the cheapest. They're going to recalculate on a couple of the other ones. But uh, one that they did was uh, crib work, which was out of concrete, but they're thinking it's going to be probably 50% more than that. Um, but they do have design changes that aren't necessarily costly that will help maintain the look of the wharf by having posts and stuff along there. The other thing they're going to do, which I think will help with everybody, is over the next couple of weeks, they're going to go down and put out some markers about where this wall this wave break is going to go, how far it's going to go, and how wide it's going to be. So at least you get a better visual that you can go out, you know, by mid-November, look out at low tide and see where this thing is actually going to be. So you might be thinking it's a lot worse in your mind than it is, or you might look at it and think, holy cow, it's a lot bigger than I ever anticipated. So we thought that might help that, uh, because just having those uh, drawings aren't necessarily giving you the, the correct visual. So are yeah, they saying, though, we, we can't just build in the same style we have now and just raise it a bit to deal with climate change? We can, but this is where the life cycle analysis come, comes into, because then another 50 years, you'll have to replace that structure. But they never gave a life cycle analysis of the rock, like, like the amount of dredging, whether the rocks could push it around, how much it costs to add more rocks, if also we need to go higher. So, well, I and, mean, and, and that's, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, I hope they give a full report. And uh, yeah, because I, I have to think there's a way or they can put enough steel girders underneath like the, the newer older wharf that you can build on top of it if you need to go a few more feet. Because it's only a few more feet we're talking about here. It's not, yep. we, we don't need to raise it 10 feet in 100 years. We need to raise it like three feet. So I would hope there's a better way to do it than dump that much rock. Yep, we're having a look, and the council will have to have to decide what they feel is appropriate. It is very important to understand, though, is that this funding is coming through green infrastructure fund. So the number one priority is we got to, and you'll see that there's a, a amendment under new business to the council package this week where we have to do a resiliency plan. So that'll come up to you on Monday night for. A but I mean, discuss. I I I don't think we should do a bad idea just because we have money right now we can always probably get more money over the next 10 years if this is an important enough pro like program like i think we really got to find the right solution and then get there not just well someone's offering us money let's throw a bunch of rocks in our harbor so anyways yep you get the information and you and council can instruct staff on what you feel is the best route Mm -hmm. I'm hesitant to say, though, Council, that we can just forego this money and get it again in 10 years. No. I'm not so sure of that. And there is a lot of work that has to be done right now on that. So if we don't go this way, there's work that has to be done on that approach immediately. So we'll discuss all that again at a future date. But it's not that Wharf doesn't have 10 more years of life with, without doing something to mm -hmm. it. It's, it's ironic because we're revisiting a, a previous decision that we've made. This was never a decision. The decision was we need to fix the wharf. It was never to make this god awful rock quarry. I've seen, ruin our I've seen all kinds of pictures of it. <laughs> yeah, in, I, in our council it, chambers. <laughs> and we never approved it. And in fact, I had that verified to me that it wasn't a decision not that long ago since COVID because I asked the question. 
So this was never a decision. This is something we got to vote on and we should take it to the public. Because anyone I asked, not many of them like this idea. It, just for clarification through your worship, last time we discussed it, we said that we were going to do get some other options and then make a decision. So um, that was the last council decision I was aware of. Correct, and just for the general public uh, listening in, the money is tentatively approved from the other levels of government, but it was council that asked to step back because of this controversy within council about whether this is a good plan or whether we need a different plan. And it, it behooves us to figure this out all properly, but as quickly as possible, because I'm sure there are lots of other people applying for money that uh, if ours is sitting in limbo, we would need to decide. So. Uh... I asked two things, and I was kind of hoping we do this before, because they have the fancy AutoCAD uh, software. Can they not do it from eye level at low tide and from various, like, can we not, because right now we have a bird's eye view, and then we have mid-tidal views. And if, I think if, if they actually use their fancy software and showed us, well, here's what it'll look like if you're standing up on King Street, looking down, and from various views, then, I mean, I could be out to lunch. I could be so wrong on this and you'd see a beautiful harbor and it would just be these little tiny rocks, but I'm pretty sure I'm not wrong. And uh, if, if we could get this, then I think that would be helpful to everyone. And the only last thing I'll say on this, because it is a budget discussion, this would be the largest commitment of money, not other people's money, town money, I think we've done since I've been here. I think it's like a million bucks of actual taxpayers, St. Andrews residents money. So at least from what I remember, that's gonna be the biggest one we've ever done. So saying we have all this free money, I think is a bit of a, I don't think it's quite true. We're about to make our biggest purchase ever since I've been here, except for I think the fire truck and maybe some, you know, if you, if you add all the roads up together. So I think we gotta do this one right. And, and, and after all, uh, I don't think I need to remind people that even though it's not free money because it's all taxpayer money and it's all our money that went to other levels of government that they're giving us back. So it's, it's all taxpayer money no matter how you look at it. But uh, we do not, you know, it's a million, it may be a million dollars of our money, but it's also we couldn't buy what we need for a million dollars. And that's why we need to have partners. So I agree, we need to do this right, but we need to do it so that we know and we don't we don't lose by default but your worship i think we can all agree that we need to do it we just need to do it right i, I agree so that's why i look forward to getting more options so we can make the best decision right. for the taxpayer of st andrews okay thank you mr spear is that is that everything in the general capital no it's not your worship um there's also 15 uh five for the wharf gate if we want to discuss that tonight or not your worship through you just a reminder that this was removed by a vote of three to two and we were just going to circle back uh with councillor akaji out of respect since she wasn't there at that meeting to make sure that it is in fact what council's wishes um so there was arguments for and against the uh lift gate at the wharf what do you councillor akaji i guess you weren't aware that you were the <laughs> we were waiting for you I didn't realize. No, I know. I'm sorry. I didn't. That didn't. My message did not get back to you. I, I'll take responsibility for that. Is it necessary to have the lift gate? The other one worked good. Well, the, the, those are the three votes for uh, is uh, not putting a permanent one in, but using the temporary one if it needs to be a COVID measure. For next year um that, that was the other arguments were to, to put it in uh simply the fact that they they, do, they wish to limit traffic long term i don't think i want to limit traffic to the people of st andrews but i think i, I would go with the temporary like adequately i don't think it's fair to councillor akaji to put her on the spot like this she didn't hear the debate um and uh she doesn't seem she doesn't have all the information it wasn't to limit traffic it's a town asset and uh, might as well have a gate there when we need it rather than uh um anyway we went through the whole debate and to put her on the spot like this isn't really fair to her 
I don't think we need a permanent. I still think a temporary one will do. Well, it is true. Thank you, Councillor Gumashow. Councillor Axey did not hear the debate. So do we need to have this debate all over again tonight? Or does this need to be some sort of a motion? Uh, you know, one has to remember, this is just the budget. If you put in, if you put in 15,500 in the budget, it doesn't mean that uh, we're going to run out or that uh, Mr. Spear is going to run out and buy a gate tomorrow with the budget or the first day of January. This can come back to council for a debate on whether that money should be spent on a permanent gate. If it's not in the budget, then then uh, a default has occurred and, and uh, we, we vote on it now and don't put it in the budget or we vote on it later as to whether it's necessary when everyone is up to speed. Your Worship? Yes. We've already had this discussion at council. We had a vote. It was passed. There was a decision of council made. Um, it's a done deal. Um, and, and council decided not to put in a permanent gate um, for, for a variety of reasons. But council, we, we had a quorum at council. We made the decision and it was done. Um, so I, can't, I don't see why the gate is here. It shouldn't be because council has decided not to do it. Okay. Deputy Mayor Henderson, just over to you. you I think it was your suggestion that we ask uh, Council Akaji to be involved in this after the fact. I concur, it seems unfair after the fact. But yeah, I, I think we all agreed that we like, like her input, but it sounds like she doesn't want a permanent gate right now either. So it sounds like a vote to four to two now. So I would say that it could be removed. I think Councillor Grew's right. There was a vote. It's three to two. There's no point in revisiting it for another vote. Three to two based on the quorum that was available. So Mr. Spear, could you please take that out of the budget? Okay. Uh, utility, I think we're at. Are we now? Um, I got a question, Your Worship. Uh, yes. Mr. Spear, is, um, we have a fairly big budget item for Market Square refurbishment. I was wondering if Mr. Spear could speak to that a little bit to let council know what that's about. Yes, certainly. Uh, sorry, I have a mute button on, but I was gonna circle back because we still have that big item. So the, the Market Square refurbishment is simply put is to put more granite there. So it's a, con or not granite, but armor stone. So what the plan is, like you have the wave break going out to the wharf, this is gonna be an extension if uh, Mr. Murphy who uh, ran, runs the restaurant that's on the water there, had built out his uh, wave break out into the harbor some to take into sea rise. So we're just basically going to extend that all the way behind the Island Quest building and uh, replace the wooden, uh, the wooden sea wall there with a rock one. The height of the rock wall wouldn't be that much higher. I think it's about halfway up the railing that's there now. But what would happen is they would raise the asphalt a little bit so people would be able to walk up and still look over it. That one shouldn't obstruct the view of, of anyone at all because it's especially that uh, Market Square is elevated lower than Water Street. So most people won't even notice it. And even if you're on Water Street, it will be rock, which some people may not like the wood, but the wood's being undermined. And uh, with these rising sea tides and stuff, it's probably going to create more problems. If you remember at Easter, there was a video going around of several <clears throat> inches of water on uh, Market Square. This would eliminate that. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit confused by this one, Mr. Spear, in that it, it seems when I look at the drawings for the wharf renovation project, it included the, the piece that goes in front of Market Square. Um, so I guess the wharf renovation project almost supersedes this Market Square refurbishment one, does it not? No, they can be treated separately for sure. But they're independent of each other and the prices on the budget reflect the two different costs. But the only solution really for Market Wharf, or sorry, Market Square is the rock. That okay. there really is no other solution that's not going to create a, a problem in, in relatively short term within 10 or 15 years if you replace it with wood you're going to run into the same thing again so so the the drawings we've seen for the wharf include the market square refurbishment project 
yeah, it was, okay, it was, gotcha. it was submitted as it's submitted as one project to the province. Okay. It's all tied in together. Mm -hmm. The the other the other project for market square refurbishment, and I've identified it to you, and we were going to get a study from CBCL. I don't know if we've received anything. Is with regards to the bricks. Um, we've had cases of, of residents slipping and falling on those bricks. And I'm not sure if that's come back to us yet, but I think we need to put a place marker there or something for, for bricks. We actually have a contractor. So we talked to CBCL and they said, long story short, is it's the same brick that's used everywhere in that type of situation. That really what's reflected is that was put in and the you know, from traffic driving over it and stuff has smoothed it out. But, you know, it's not that it's inappropriate brick there. Should it be replaced? Probably, but he wouldn't call it a high priority. However, we've gone to a contractor to ask them to provide a quote of what it would cost to replace the bricks. That may take two or three weeks, but I think, Terry, if I remember, it's over $100,000 when you did the original initial estimate. I think it was around uh, actually about two hundred sixty thousand. Have we had uh, many complaints of people falling on these bricks? Nothing through the town, like no legal action. I'm not saying people. I'll be the first to admit I've taken slips on that. I tend to slip on the curbs more than the bricks, but I'm not disagreeing. <clears throat> you know, our staff is excellent about getting stuff down and sanding and salting just as best as they can. Um, but it's not just market square, it's the whole on the front street, it's the same material. Where, where it comes from is, um, I, I've been approached by one resident who fractured three ribs in a fall on, on, on the bricks on market square. And, and you know, it's, it's, it c can be quite serious if you, when, when you're walking on those bricks when it's uh, wet out, uh, or if there's any kind of, uh, you know, frost, uh, they are extremely slippery. Can we turn them over? <laughs> Same thing. They probably have. But just to be clear, CBCL said there's no sense of them doing a study on it because it, it is what it is. Like they're going to tell us the same thing. It's, it's what's been practically in use. And yes, they probably should be replaced because of wear and tear. So it's just a matter of getting a quote for what it's going to cost to replace that, which we've actively asked a contractor to do. So hopefully that'll be in your hands. I think I'm ready for page 30, Your Worship. Whoop. Great. Uh, Mr. Spear, we're going to page 30. Yeah, these are the projects under the, the utility, if Your Worship. All right, so the first thing is under the concrete reservoir um, to get a, a backup to our SCADA system for a low water indicator. Council remembers um, earlier this year we had the town almost ran out of water, um, low pressure all throughout the town that the system had failed. That system has been replaced already, but we want to have a secondary system just to make sure that if there's an issue with the pumps, it becomes, it's only 6,500. The big one is reconditioning the steel reservoir. We've already uh, uh, reconditioned the concrete reservoir earlier this spring. And we do that one that'll see Terry and I out for sure. It's a 15 to 20 year project. It is a need, it's probably a couple of years past due. So it requires an inspection, which uh, they have already did an inspection and gave us like some informal advice. Uh, but they're saying that it should be done fairly soon. Is that correct, Terry? Correct, Chris. That when they were in, um, I think with the concrete reservoir, they had a, a camera that they ran in and had a look at it. So the commercial meter program, we've talked again, that under our current bylaw, commercial meters are actually the responsibility of the establishments. The problem we have is after we did that water study, they said that, the meters um, 
there's no incentive for them to replace the meters that they kind of they tend to malfunction and slow down so it's staff's recommendation that we take that out of the current bylaw and start replacing some of these larger meters the hope is that that'll increase the revenue for the places that we do uh, replace them that probably offset that within two to five years is my guess then um, below that under the is the for lift station renovations is the portable generator for power outages. And so what happens is we have three or four lift stations in town that uh, move sanitary waste to the lagoon. In the event of a power outage, the stuff can overflow into the bay, but we have enough capacity that if there's a long power outage, staff can just keep going, and like turn the pumps on with this one portable generator and keep it going and then circle back. So it, it stay in shop somewhere inside and then if needed staff would just go out and start keeping the system going so we don't get into an overflow situation. Uh, then $30,000 for a UV chamber overhaul that's at the water treatment plant. So we're um, 16 years into that is when I first started with the town that that was put into operation. So it is due for like a refurbishment and that's regarding the electrical and the bulbs that go in there. There's two stacks, we've done a lot of them this year. So this is the second half of that project. Uh, there's also a backup water pump uh, for the system. Uh, they have three, we'd like one more just in case something goes down and you can put it in and out and get the other one fixed and still have it for three. Then screens for the backwash. So as part of the system, uh, as every once in a while staff have to go out and reverse the flow of the water to clean out the screens that are catching any debris that or elements that come in from the lake. And so it's just a system to clean that out and clean it out before it goes into the environment. It's reversed and just pumped out, uh, out there. So that's for $14,000. So if you flip to the next page, page 31. Uh, at the lagoon, we'd originally talked about replacing a liner this year, but for, because of COVID and various reasons, we held it off. So it's $120,000. It's really not a replacement. It's uh, to fix the liner that's there. There was some damage done because of pumps or the things that blow the air, the aerators had fallen into it. A big part of the cost council is to do it right, you've got to actually clean all the sludge out of there. So that's a big part of the cost is that they have to take one offline bring in equipment to clean the sludge that is currently there and have it hauled away, and then to repair the liner that's underneath. Then a blower unit for the aerators, which is what causes the pumping sensation at the, uh, at the lagoon. Then Sophia Street, it's really under two spots here. Is that Sophia? Yeah. So it was $125,000 to replace the water lines. Uh, I think that's on the block between Queen and Water, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yes from Terry. And then there's another 125 for the sewer main to the next page. And there's a section of uh, King, King Street that we need to replace the sewer mains on. Uh, Terry, do, I don't know what block that is. I kind of forget about the dialogue. That's, yeah, it's on King Street, uh, so starting at Prince of Wales, going towards Kingsbury. Okay. And so that's a total budget of $932,000 under capital projects and utility. We have about 186000 in leftover utility fees that we can use towards it, which means we have to borrow about $746,000 to do all those projects next year. As discussed by council, sorry, Your Worship, I'll just add this really quick, that we had increased the annual inflation to 4% in revenues, and that did allow a fairly big increase so that if you remember in earlier versions of the budget, that line transfer for operating fund had almost fallen down to $30,000 by year five, but that did allow us to stay up at 100, you know, stay at around $150,000 that comes from operations but that's a percent increase in revenue one way or the other uh, over those five years that we'll have to dis discuss with this council and future councils to make that happen. And really, it's really two things. It's either raise water weights or stop projects. 
and uh, that's really the two options because the system so there will be some funding that comes in over time but uh, the funding is only a small portion of what we really need to keep moving forward on this thank you worship I, i'm now done okay thank you mr spear um your worship yes Councilor. thank you if i could i i could just add is we we still have a um a sustainability problem with regards to the uh, utilities budget. And what I mean by that is when you look at the, um, I guess the net operating expenses, they're running at around $200,000 per year. And when you look at the capital program, it's running at about a million dollars. So we have a deficit of about $800,000 a year type thing. So we're incurring uh, more and more debt to operate the utility. And in fact, when you look at the, uh, the utility fund debt analysis that uh, Mr. Spears provided, and thank you very much for that, um, we're seeing a tripling of the town debt level for utility fund, going from 1.8 million to 5.2 million. And that is not sustainable. We, we can't do that. Because when we, and, and that brings us up to a, a debt service ratio of 43%. And when you look at, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out beyond 2025, we are going to be as a town in a real world of hurt. And we need to do something between now and 2025 to address that situation. And as a council, a 4% increase per year is just not going to cut it. It has to be, a, a, we have to identify or flag a more substantial increase for next councils and we say, okay, this is an issue you need to address. We don't know what the exact solution is right now, but it's a big issue that has to be addressed. And we're probably talking uh, increases of at least 10 to 15% a year in the water rates to bring this up to a level that, that is going to be sustainable over the long term. Um, we, we, we can sort of close our eyes, bury our head in the sand, but at the end of the day, the numbers are here and it shows you that this is not sustainable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Councilor Gru. Um, we all understand that uh, it's very expensive to run a utility in a small town or in any town, so uh, I, I get your point, you know, uh, but uh, at this point in time, we're, at, we'll be, we're asking our citizens to pay for debt servicing instead of paying up front to uh, reduce debt servicing. And uh, you're saying it's unsustainable, but it, when we look at it, uh, Mr. Spear, maybe not tonight, but maybe you can give us a little bit of, where's everybody else in the world? You know, my understanding is that most jurisdictions have the very same problem in most jurisdictions have worse debt ratios than we do for their utility. Has anybody, has anybody solved it to break even that we're aware of? You worship the debt. But, well, no, no one solved it, you worship. And it is on staff's agenda for the next few weeks to do a more in-depth analysis of this, of various things, like where the rates should consider to be. But right. it may be an opportunity to, to review, because we had that report done a few years ago now, that we may want to revisit that. But sorry, right. Deputy Mayor also had his hand raised. Yeah, Deputy Mayor, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I certainly appreciate Councillor Gru's uh, thoughts. We've, uh, we've discussed this uh, several times. Uh, every time we hit this at the end of it, I can appreciate it. He is not wrong. Um, however, uh, I don't want to waste a bunch of staff's time currently doing an analysis on something that this council is not going to fulfill. We have a municipal plan, we have a secondary plan, we have a zoning plan, we've talked about the uh, transport, active transportation plan. The reality is, is I don't think this council in the last five months that it has is going to get through all of this and fix the water rate. So although I appreciate staff doing the analysis so they can help prepare the next council better, the reality is, is that's not a decision that this council is probably going to make. So. Uh, we can certainly flag it and, and give indication that they're going to have to find a, a way to get more revenue in the future, but I don't think this council needs to spend any time debating how to get there. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I also think kind of the converse of this is a lot of these projects are probably going to be a 10-year plan, not a five-year plan. 
because I don't know if there is going to be a, a lot more money, even if we get 25 or up to 50%, it's still a lot of money. And I guess we may just have to push some of these out. This may be more, still more of a wish list than a, what we're, what we're going to actually do. Either that or we're going to really high water rates. <clears throat> Well, as council is aware too, there's economic development issues. If you start to skyrocket the water rates too high, council agrees right, but it's a very um, complicated issue that goes more than just trying to balance your books. Yeah. Hey, council, um, I think we're at the end of the discussion of uh, what Mr. Speaker has presented to us. Uh, are we? Uh, Pretty comfortable now with uh, taking a look at debating the approval of this budget on Monday night. I think we are, Your Worship. I think we've uh, gone through it, and I think we're in a place where we can do it now. Okay. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. If everybody else is okay with that, Your Worship. I guess we, uh, Council yeah. Group. Sorry. Thank you. I, I I would make one request. I would request that um, the the um, operating budget and the utility budget be separated into two separate motions so that we can um, you know, raise our concerns on each individual budget where, and, and you can vote in favor of one budget without voting in favor of the other one. And you know, cause I, I, I'm still not comfortable with the utility budget as it stands. However, I am very comfortable with the operating budget. So. Uh, I, Mr. Spear, is that, we going to get in trouble with the provincial government for organizing our motions that way, or can we do it that way? No, we can break it up to worship. We okay. sometimes glue them together because at that point council just wants to get to the end of it, but certainly it's not a big deal to split that motion into two. Okay, good. Thank you, Mr. Spear. Councillor Gru, Mr. Spear will uh, will do that. Thank you. For Monday night. All right. Um, Mr. Knopper, I think we're at questions from the public. Uh, for you, Your Worship, I'll start with uh, who's on um, Zoom. So, uh, Neil, if you have any question, or if you've got a question for Council on tonight's agenda, uh, you've got your time to present it now. Thank you, Mr. Knopper. Uh, for your worship, thank you for um, including me in this. Uh, we, uh, I, I was, I heard the whole proceedings about the tourism levy. Um, I will have to confer with our parent organization, the Chamber, um, because the numbers that we uh, were presented today are, are new to us. So I understand you're looking for a detailed budget. Um, we will endeavor to do the best we can with a volunteer organization with very little time. Um, but uh, we will present at least an overview. We've done some work um, with uh, the, the committee to establish a vision and marketing priorities, uh, and we appreciate Council's consideration of uh, putting extra funds towards uh, destination marketing, which is a very important uh, um, endeavor for this town. I agree with uh, um, Deputy Mayor Henderson. Uh, on, on his stance on that. So we do appreciate uh, the additional funds there. Uh, and we will look to um, activate a VIC if, if, if feasible. Um, there is some question as to whether it's a destination marketing operation. Yeah, frankly, it is not. But when I put my full-time job hat on as a tourism operator, I do recognize, and I think our, I can speak on behalf of our committee, we recognize there is still significant value in that. So we will um, endeavor to find a way to, to make that operate in some form or fashion. Um, at this point, I have no other questions uh, of council unless there's any questions that, or that you wish to be directed towards the town. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, appreciate it. Through you, your worship, uh, looking at the comments online, there's not actually a question from the comments from the public. Uh, but I would encourage Council to read over our Facebook for the comments. Um, but other than that, Council, back to you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Knopper. I appreciate that. Uh, comments from uh, Council? Uh, anyone have a comment other than uh, see you all on Monday night? 
Councilor Group. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just one comment. Um, I, I noticed that uh, in, in looking at the agenda for Monday night, there's been uh, two new items added that were not discussed at our, um, our, our meeting. Um, and, and I just wanted to um, suggest that perhaps if they're not urgent that those two items might be moved to the December meeting rather than November meeting. Um, to give council an opportunity to, to review those items and to get uh, uh, familiar with them. Okay, I will discuss that tomorrow with Mr. Spear and Mr. Knopper to determine that. I'll let you know, okay? Okay, thank you. I haven't had a chance to address that. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Uh, uh, yes. I just, I just uh, whenever we do this, it's always good. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, I know Emily's on here, uh, as well as Terry, uh, and then Paul and Chris, just thank you for all your work with the budget. I think it was actually the quickest. We, mm -hmm. well, certainly the earliest, but I think it was the quickest and believe it or not, least amount of meetings that we ever did to pass a budget. So um, great work uh, on getting us concise, getting consensus, and uh, really appreciate all their efforts um, for, again, the earliest budget that we potentially will ever have approved. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Practice makes perfect, eh, for us. <laughs> well, I, th I think, Your Worship, the, the quality of the budget documents uh, speaks for themselves, and, and uh, yeah. it, it, made, it made Council's job a whole lot easier uh, when we were going through these budget documents, and, and you could see the, the thought that went behind them. So, again, I echo those, those sentiments. Thank you very much. Yeah, I concur, Councillor Gru, and I appreciate your comments on behalf of staff. All right, anybody else have any comments this evening? Well, look, th thank you, Council. I, I think we've had a very successful and important deliberation of budget this year as well. I want to appreciate, and I appreciate the, uh, the diligence that our Council has put into this this year and every year, of course, but we've been much more efficient. Practice makes perfect. And uh, anyway, uh, Thank you so much, and uh, I will. Uh, I think that's it for this evening. I don't have any particular comments other than what I've made, and I'll look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Thank you, Councillor Gumichel, and a seconder. I'll First, second Councillor <laughs> Ackerjee, you had to be involved. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're adjourned. Thank you, Council. Thank you.